Welcome to Ezika Academy YouTube channel. In this video, I will examine five core changes to 2023 in Nigeria Finance that that may be examined or that will be common to your examination questions. If you are coming across my lecture for the first time, please like the video. Also share it with others and subscribe so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you for being part of this channel. I want to note the following. There are no retrospective applications of any finance art principle. No retrospective application of any finance art principle. This means changes that took place in 2023 finance art will not be applied to 2022, 2021, 2020, or any years of assessment that comes before that 2023. In accounting, we normally make use of historical data. So in 2024, it is not possible for the examiner to give you the 2025 financial year in transition when you are actually in 2024. So unless it is a forecast financial statement. For your exam purpose, I want you to note these five core changes in 2023 Finance Act. Change number one, investment allowance on plant and equipment has been removed. Investment allowance on plant and equipment has been removed. So, notice is a change to so 2023 Finance Act. Since we are in 2024, if your exam questions involves 2022 or 2021 or 2020 or any years prior to 2023 year of assessment, you will still need to apply investment allowance on plant and machinery. But if the year you are given the questions involves 2023, 2024 or 2025 year of of assessment, then you will not need to apply investment allowance. There are no difference in the computation. Just know that you are not going to apply investment allowance in your work. The calculation of capital allowance still remains the same, only that you will not need to include investment allowance if the year of assessment is from 2023 upwards. Take note of that. Number two, tertiary education tax has been increased to three percent of the accessible profit. Tertiary education tax has been increased to 3% of the accessible profit. No, it is 2023 finance act that increased it to 3%. Prior to 2021 finance act, tertiary education tax was at the rate of prior to 2021. It was at the rate of 2%. At least before 2021 year of assessment, it was 2%. So in 2021 now, 2021 year of assessment and to 2022. That means in 2021 finance act, the rate was increased to 2.5%. So in 2023, it, it has now been increased to 3%. Meaning that if your exam questions involve any year before 2021, you are expected to apply. 2%. If the year of assessment is 2021 or 2022, you are expected to apply 2.5%. And if it involves 2023 or 2024, we are still in 2024, you are expected to make use of 3%. Number three, rollover relief on sale of shares is subject to reinvestment 
of the proceeds within the same year of assessment. I repeat, rollover relief on sale of shares. You know, it, this is applicable to professional level students. It is not part of the skill level syllabus because at the professional level, you have capital gains tax as part of your syllabus. So rollover relief on sale of shares is subject to reinvestment of the proceeds within the same year of assessment. Number four, deductions of capital losses on assets for capital gains tax purposes for the same type of assets may be carried forward for a maximum of five years. This is equally applicable to professional level students. So the topic is capital gain tax. Since capital gain tax is, pass, is part of the advanced, advanced taxation. Note number five, taxation of gains on the disposal of digital assets, including cryptocurrency, is at the rate of 10%. I repeat, taxation of gains on the disposal of digital assets, including cryptocurrency, at the rate of 10%. Please take note of these five core changes to 2023 Finance Act, which you may be examined in your transition or advanced transition. Please share the video with others. Like it. Drop the love emoji. Thanks for watching Ezekiel.